Welcome to Crystal Maker. In this tutorial, we'll learn different ways of visualizing surfaces in crystals. Slicing a crystal to reveal a surface of interest, creating an oriented slab, and transforming the unit cell into a surface cell. The easiest way to visualize a surface is simply to slice a large block of crystal to reveal the surface structure. We'll start by using the range popover. And we're going to create a large block of atoms by clicking the add cells button a few times. Next, we'll display a lattice plane parallel to the surface we want to show. We'll navigate to the Lattice Planes group in the Inspector, and in version 10 you'll find it under the Volume tab. We can add a new lattice plane by double-clicking in the list. This gives us a default orientation of 111, which is actually the orientation we want. I'm going to change the colour and opacity to make the plane stand out better. Next, we'll view our plane sideways on. Now you'll find a command for this on the transform menu, but we could have also got a shortcut under this actions menu, view horizontally. Now it also helps to change the model type to ball and stick, so we can see things a little bit more clearly. We'll also zoom in a little bit. We now need to move the plane to where we want to create the surface. And to do this, we go back to the inspector and click the Move button to reveal a slider. And we can click and drag this to reposition the plane. Now I'm going to create my surface between a layer of oxygen atoms and a layer of magnesiums. Maybe about here. Now that we've defined where we want our surface to be, it's time to make it visible. To do this, we'll use the slice crystal command, which we can find on the actions menu up here. I'm going to hide the atoms on top. Those are the unselected atoms, hide others. And now I'll hide the lattice plane by unclicking its visibility checkbox. And we'll switch back to our original space filling view. Here then is our ideal 111 plane in the spinel structure, showing quasi close packed oxygen ions. Now remember, we could easily have created the surface at other heights by moving the lattice plane to those positions. And notice that the unit cell is still visible in this view. We haven't transformed it in any way, we've merely hidden atoms above the surface that we created at a particular depth in the crystal structure. If you are interested in domain boundaries, twinning, or topotactic relationships, it's helpful to be able to create an oriented slab of material. This can be done by repeating the slicing procedure we saw earlier or we can use two lattice planes to isolate a suitable slab. We will return to our first lattice plane and use the lattice planes group to add a second. I'll give this a distinct colour and we'll move it into position.
we can isolate the resulting slab using the make slab command, which you can find on the transform menu and also on the lattice planes actions menu. Here we have a double oxide layer from the spinel structure. To create a surface cell, use the Transform Unit Cell submenu and the Project onto Lattice Plane command. We'll specify 111 as our projection cell and click the Generate Surface Cell button to continue. We now have a new and highly oblique unit cell with new cell axes, X and Y in the plane that used to be 111, and Z that's directed out of that plane and at a, a rather oblique angle. Notice that for many structures it simply isn't possible to define orthogonal axes and Crystal Maker will create the smallest and most convenient cell it can find. Let's use the range popover to show more. We'll start by adding more atoms parallel to the plane along X and along Y. You should now be able to recognize this as the former 111 orientation that we looked at earlier. We'll now add more atoms perpendicular to the plane by changing the new z axis range. Notice how the surface structure changes with depth. To summarize what we've done, we've created surface structures by slicing the crystal, by defining a parallel sided slab, and by transforming the unit cell. Each of these methods can be useful in different applications.